talk about the canine or dog immune boost points. Um, they used to be referred to as the wellness points and that's really what it kind of does. It kind of it boosts the immune system to give bring the body back into balance. And a body that's in balance will tend to be happier, healthier, and live a better life. So by stimulating these points, it brings the body into balance and brings up the immune system. The other thing it will do is it will help for any kind of viruses or things that are going on that it'll help to, um, you know, a body that's got better immune system is going to be do a better job of not catching these problems to start with. And then any other little aches and pains and things that you just don't know what could be going on with the animal, it will tend to take care of those without you having to really have to monitor everything all the time. Now the best way to use the immune boost wellness points is to do it as a preventive maintenance. In other words, don't wait till you have a problem before you start using the points. So we say to get the body jump started first, we like to say do the immune boost, boost points every other day to every third day for the first week. And then after that, you can start backing off. So you can get six to eight times in, in a three week period. Once you get there, then you can start backing this off to once a week, once every two weeks, just to keep the body in maintenance. You'll find out if you take care of your dog's immune points and boost their immune system, that you'll have a happier and healthier dog. Okay, we're going to show you the immune boost points for the dog. And uh, you do these anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, sometimes even just 5 seconds enough for a dog. I'm going to start from the front and work myself to the back. So the first point is our governing vessel 26, located just underneath the nose. I like to cut my hand underneath and kind of take uh, you know, my hand around their nose and it kind of holds them there. Move down, and we're going to find large intestine 16. So what you need to feel for is what feels like the front of the scapula. Now what I do is I feel for like a little bit of a pencil, and you roll forward, and you're going to find a notch in the lower part of the scapula before it gets to the humerus bone. All right, and in that notch you're going to find large intestine 16. Another way you can find it is just take your fingers and run down you're going to it's your, your finger just falls into a hole if I go on each side of the neck muscle it falls into a hole and you'll find large intestine 16. Large intestine 11 continues down this line down the leg as you can see here and it's the simplest way of a dog is like this it, it just creates this really when they when they when they actually bend their leg it makes this crease on us as humans it's on the end of the of the arm at the end of the crease it's kind of the same thing for them it's at the end of this crease when they bend their arm you come up and it falls right into the crease between the humerus bone right where that connection is and that's where you find large intestine 11. We're going to move up to the bladder line. So bladder line on this size dog is about two fingers width away from the center of the, of the top of the dog. I'm going to find the scapula. I'm going to feel around the top of the scapula. It's going to be at about a comma shaped. So it's going to actually be round. And if I look to the front part of it, I'm going to find a crease. And uh, really it's kind of right where the base of the neck of where our collar was on them but you can feel this deep hole right here, and that's bladder 11. Following it around the scapula to where it falls on the opposite side, so you have the one in front and the one in back. So you got 11 and then 13. This is, the 11 is actually located in the first intercostal intervertebral space, and bladder 13 is in the third intervertebral or intercostal space. Intervertebral means between the vertebra, intercostal means in between the ribs. Mm. And when you see them yawn like that, that's typically that means something's working well. You're going to come back down beyond the ribs to the second vertebra of the lumbar. 
we're going to find bladder 23. And then we're going to move back, that's along that whole same side, and I'm going to look for bladder 23. And that is located, if I find the last rib and come up, I'm going to go two vertebra, I'm going to feel one, two, two vertebra from there. It's in the second space of the lumbar vertebra is where bladder 23 would be, same distance away from the center of the spine. If we come down the middle, you're going to feel the end of the lumbar vertebra where it stops to where all of a sudden you feel the sacral vertebra. There's going to be a hole right in the center lined with the tail. That hole is the Bach way. And then the last few points are just on the leg itself. So we're going to feel the bone above the stifle joint, or actually below the stifle joint, and I'm going to feel for a notch on the tibia bone. There it is. Now, when we mark these, he might have been sitting different, so they move a little bit, but I'm going to feel the notch of the tibia bone, and I'm going to go below it, and that is gallbladder 34. And I find with the dogs, I tend to use just one light. You know, where the horses, we'd like to use two lights, but it, I got to kind of keep one dog hand on a dog or the dogs will pretty much leave. On the front, you're going to find stomach 36. And then if I follow that notch around to where it falls into a hole, and I always just put my thumb on the top of the stifle joint, run it down, and you'll feel this hole. It's about 45 degrees down from the gallbladder 34, you'll find stomach 36. And then the back of the leg is bladder 40. We have two more bladder points back here. One and bladder points run on the back of the leg to start with and then head down the side. So if you bend their leg where it makes this deep hole in the back, that is bladder 40. And then you'll find that pretty much bladder 60 and kidney 3, you can do it one time because it's, you know, depending on the size of the animal, it'll probably just shine straight through. Bladder 60 being on the outside, kidney 3 on the inside. If we continue to move down the leg, and I'm just going to show you on the inside, you're going to feel the deep skin behind the bone, in front of the, of the um, tendon, and this is kidney, th or this is bladder 60, and on the inside is kidney 3. So you can see I can actually push through. So when we red light this, I can just put it on the one spot and get both. So this would be bladder 60, kidney 3 is on the inside. And then the last point on the end of the distal second phalanx of the second digit or between the first or second and third toe. Remember the, fir the first toe should be a dew claw on the back, but they don't have a dew claw, so they only got four. So pretty much you can just cover the whole thing in this size dog and you're going you're gonna to get it. And that's your points. And of course you're going to do them on both sides. And Henry did a great job of sitting here and allowing us to be his model. And uh, Hope you guys have a good time doing this. Remember the immune boosts are the most forgotten, but they're almost the most strongest thing you can do for your animal. So to reiterate, these are great for any dogs that have a, a sensitivity or it's just the first time they ever use lights and we want to get them used to it. But the big thing is it puts them into what's called parasympathetic mode. So now they're ready to have any other kind of light work done to them. 